one one. I want to fight Rico again. You know, I'm the king of the jungle, and if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, and I know I can do this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, quarantine times call for quarantine measures. I am here from the United States of America getting set for Glory 77 and what a card it's going to be. Arguably the biggest card loaded from top to bottom in Glory kickboxing history. Four world title fights, ladies and gentlemen, and it happens live and exclusively on pay-per-view January 30th. The Women's Super Bantamweight title is on the line as Tiffany Van Seuss returns to square off against Eileen Pereira, the young, nasty, hungry contender who happens to be the younger sister of Alex Pereira. Welterweight championship on the line, a fight that's been so brewing for so many months, years really. It's Cedric Dubé versus Myrtle Broodhart. These two men absolutely despise each other. And then in our co-main event, a fight that we have been chomping at the bits to see for years here in glory and finally it is upon us the reigning light heavyweight champion squaring off against the middleweight champion and interim light heavyweight champion alex Pereira. they collide for all the marbles on january 30th and then in the coup de gras the world heavyweight title is on the line as rico verhoeven defends for a record 10th time as he faces the man who beat him in his kickboxing debut. That's right, Jamal Ben City knocked out Rico Verhoeven, handing the future king of kickboxing his first ever KO loss. Rico got back that win at Glory 49, which we'll talk about later, but this time it's the trilogy, and it's for the World Heavyweight Championship. And who better to discuss this card with than the former welterweight champion of the world, Joseph Valtellini from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Joe, how you doing, buddy? Now, I'm pretty good here, man, just at home, you know, quarantining like usual, but uh, set up a little bit of glory memorabilia behind me, and I actually got uh, my belt that I won at Glory 17 here, and that's actually the day that Rico won his title, too, so just excited for that rivalry. Um, back at Glory 49, there was a lot of heat after that, Jamal Ben Sadiq, you know, calling out Rico a few times, so I'm ready for the rivalry, and I'm ready for it to get settled. Well, the closest that Rico's ever come to losing, perhaps, was against Jamal Ben Sadiq at Glory 49. Jamal had him on the ropes in round one and nearly put the king away. What did we learn about him that night? Well, that he's got that nasty power. I mean, their first fight, which started this big beef, was um, early on, uh, before glory times, Jamal Ben Sadiq ended up knocking out Rico Verhoeven with a powerful right hand. So Jamal Ben Sadiq came in with a lot of confidence coming into that fight. Rico obviously got a lot better, became so dominant during that little bit of time. But early on in that fight, it showed that Jamal Ben Sadiq does have that power to put Rico out. But then we got to see Rico be the champion he is, where he was able to compose himself, stay structured, keep using his jab, which was a key in that first fight, keep chopping away the legs, and ultimately get that nasty finish in that fifth round. You know, Joe, usually when two guys collide in the ring afterwards, they hug it out, they show mutual respect. But for some reason, Jamal didn't do so, or at least Rico didn't think he did. In fact, Jamal spit in Rico's face before that second battle, and he has not forgiven him and promises to punish him in their third encounter. We'll revisit Glory 49 in just a few minutes. In fact, it was the fight of the year. But right now, let's take a look back at some of their common opponents.
majority decision. Fighting out of the red corner, Rico Verhoeven. And this was a scene at the weigh-in yesterday. They could not wait to get things started. Having a scuffle being separated by Roy Matchmaker Core Hammers. Zimmerman already testing him with a right hand, and now he gets caught. Zimmerman gets caught by Verhoeven. Zimmerman is in big trouble here. And Verhoeven! Verhoeven's got to be careful. decision all for your winner and now glory heavyweight champion of the world Rico Verhoeven and here comes the Dutch lumberjack wearing the traditional red and black check shirt as he always does into the ring oh and down goes Arts big shot there by Ben Sadiq. This doesn't look good for Arch. Check out where he got cut that left hook. It's like almost a slapping motion. Right back at it. Round number two. Peter Arts and Jamal Ben Sadiq. And here comes Arts. And down goes Ben Sadiq. Are you kidding me? Sadiq is back up. Can Arts finish this fight? The two are throwing massive shots. Sadiq lands. Oh, what a war. Nobody's home is fine. And again, Sadiq. Big shot, and Arts continues to move forward. Big right. Down goes Ben Sadiq. This is unbelievable. One more time, and Ben Sadiq goes down. This fight is over. Peter Arts pouring it on, but Sadiq coming back now. Oh, big shots. This is one of the wildest spikes I've ever seen. But Ben Sadiq can't recover. Oh, spinning back fist. We are seeing everything. And the knee drop to the Ben Sadiq. He is down. That's it, of course. But that's the right call. Your winner by split decision, Rico Verhoeven. Rico Verhoeven escapes with a split decision 
over the Dutch lumber Jack Peter Art, a man who has dedicated nearly 30 years of his life to kickboxing, a man who retires a legend. Please welcome I was still a youngster. I made a mistake, got hit, dropped. The king still reigns supreme. It's 1 1. I want to fight Rico again. The boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath man. I know I can do this. Well, we've seen them fight against other fighters. Let's watch them fight each other. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Jamal Ben Sadiq in his pro debut knocked out Rico Verhoeven. Fast forward to Glory 49, September 2017, and the bad blood was boiling between these two. Joe, what did you think was going to happen that night? Well, I knew there's a lot of power in Jamal Ben Sadiq, so you're almost wait for that moment to happen. And can Rico take that power? But I mean, it was just the excitement, the rivalry, and just knowing how much power Sadiq had. Could Rico take it again? That just really set up for a really exciting fight. As I mentioned earlier, Jamal Ben Sadiq handed Rico Verhoeven his first ever KO loss when Jamal Ben Sadiq beat him in his pro debut. Fast forward to September 2017. And it was the rematch, this time for Rico's world heavyweight title. Let's go back now. Glory 49, Rico versus Jamal, and it turned out to be the fight of the year. Uh, my first professional fight was against Rico for Hoover in 2011. I beat him on knockout. It's a long time ago, man. I was an upcoming talent. You gotta take a loss to become a boss. And I'm the boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. He's a strong, good athlete. But I'm a fighter. And I come to fight. And I come to knock people out. It happens, ladies and gentlemen, December 10th in Rotterdam. Rico Verhoeven and Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. And now, glory heavyweight champion of the world, Rico Verhoeven! Rico Verhoeven finally has gold around his waist. He is the new glory heavyweight champion. So you see nothing from Jamal Ben Sadiq that would worry you at all if you were nothing, to fight him? Nothing. Jamal Ben Sadiq! You know what I want, yes? I, uh, I have said yesterday, I want Rico, man. I waited too long for this. I beat him once, yes, yes. so where is Rico? Come into the ring, man, come. this isn't even a challenge. People saw this fight. How boring was this fight? I almost fell asleep. Fuck him, you know. I beat him once. I beat him once. He's nothing. He told me, butter did this, butter did that. I am not butter, man. I am not you once. I was, I was a little boy. Let's make it happen, man. I'm ready for this guy. I'm ready for any guy. But if he wants it, let's do it. We got this. Good afternoon, Rotterdam. How are you guys doing? I'm gonna scare the shit out of this guy. Same thing. I'm now fighting for the belt. Please welcome to the stage the challenger for Glory's World Heavyweight Championship, the Goliath, Jamal Big Ben Sadi. It will uh, happen again. I will knock him out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the best pound for pound fighter in the world today, Rico Verhoeven. Five keer, three minutes is in hell. I'm going to 
En ik ga, ook al weet ik dat hij in de derde ronde of de vierde ronde eruit kan. In de 24e minuut, de allerlaatste minuut van die vijfde ronde, dan pas ga ik hem nog uitslaan. All right, let's have our big stare down. Court, good luck keeping these guys apart. Here we go. If you feel the pressure and knows uh, that uh, I'm not a fighter that uh, he had the last couple of fights, and I know it, and uh, he have pressure, and I can see it in his eyes. And you saw him breaking under the pressure. There is no other reason why you start shouting, spitting, and doing some crazy shit, getting angry for nothing. One thing is for sure that 9 December is going to be 2-0. Definitely going to, I'm going to enjoy more with the suffering I'm going to give him between the fourth and the fifth round because it's going to be tough. But it's not going to last for five rounds. So let him think about five rounds. <laughs> it happens December 9th, ladies and gentlemen. Jamal Ben Sadiq versus Rico Verhoeven for the Glory World Heavyweight Championship. We'll see you in Rotterdam. I expect the rematch like we saw last time. Those two fighters made for each other. As for our main event, there is the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. He looks for his 15th straight glory win tonight. As for his opponent, it's the challenger, the Goliath, Jamal Ben City. Yeah, and he's going to really look on landing that big power shot he did six years ago. He's confident. His team's confident. Let's see what package Ben Sadiq brings. A lot of bad blood between these two. There he is, a mountain of a man. Six foot eight, 264 pounds, Jamal Ben Sadiq. And as intimidating as he looks on the outside, inside he's just as fragile as the rest of us. A cancer survivor, Jamal was once near death's door. He beat that disease and tonight vows to beat Verhoeven and dedicate his performance to those battling cancer around the world.
Davis, and there's a nice jab from Rico, which gets an ooh and an ah from this clock, this crowd. Yeah, he found that in that second round. Because Rico goes southpaw, attack with the hand. Once you switch southpaw and you're an orthodox fighter, your defense isn't as good. A close round three between Rico and Jamal. In round one, it was Sadiq who was marching down Rico, but now Sadiq fighting backwards. And he's trying to drop him in, pull him into that right hand. Sadiq's corner should know that Verhoeven is up two rounds to one. Perhaps Sadiq needs to be a bit more aggressive. Yeah, if he has it in the tank, he's got to find it. Sadiq basically needs at least a knockdown, if not a knockout here in the fifth round. Yeah, he's going to need more than a knockdown. If it's a draw, it goes to the champion. Oh, and a left hook connects for Sadiq. Couple jabs and a right hand. How about Rico bringing the fight into the Goliath? Right, yeah, right. even though some complain that Rico's not a closer. He's not a finisher. He's not a knockout artist. Is he going to prove everybody wrong here? The head kick started this sequence. An overhand right and another one. Oh, Sadiq's against the ropes. It's a stand. Come and get it. It's 1-1. One, one. I want to fight Rico again. You know, I'm the king of the jungle, and if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. What a fight that was. One of the best I've ever had the privilege of calling while working at Glory Kickboxing. So the big question was for Jamal Ben Sadiq, what next? Well, he entered a eight-man, one-night heavyweight tournament. You have to win three fights in the same night to be crowned champion. He did it. Here's how it happened. The Glory 62 Rotterdam eight-man heavyweight tournament. All have accepted the grueling three fights in one night challenge. Are you ready for glory? A knockout ratio of over 80%. One of those feared strikers in the game today. Jamal the Goliath Ben Sadi. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, payment commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. They both known for punching power. Neutral. There you go. Put it on eBay. The issue is that hopefully Staff is not over worried about it, but he's coming in with that big overhand right. Toy, 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 toy. Keeps falling. That's it, last warning. No, you have to fight with the cup. Put it in. Unfortunately, he can't just take his shorts off and put it back on. Neutral. Is that a body shot or shot to the cup? Two. 20 seconds to go for Tafa. Tafa keeps 
showing that it's low, but... Advancing to the tournament semifinals, Jamal Ben Sadi. Uh, I feel great. Uh, like I told yesterday, I'm ready for the tournament and uh, I won the first fight. And uh, let's go to the second fight and uh, then we'll see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, we next go back to the other half of the tournament bracket for semifinal number two, featuring Guto Innocent and Jamal Ben Sadi. Subscribe if you like. Subscribe. Your winner, who now advances to the tournament final, Jamal Ben Sadi. The game that was good, and now uh, off to the finals. Only two big men remain in our eight-man tournament, and it's time to find out who will be the last man standing in your main event of the evening. Jamal the Goliath Ben Sadi. It's Mr. Gentleman. Benjamin Adegui! Tournament final, I expect you to fight for it. Touch clubs if you like. For the tournament final, here we go in Rotterdam. Three three minute rounds. Oh, big power shot, something happened. Oh, 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 You know I'm gonna, uh, I want to fight uh, Rico again, it's 1-1, one, one. so uh, I hope uh, Rico... Uh, I, I hope Rico accept the fight immediately and, uh, and take this fight and fight with me again. Congratulations, he is your eight-man heavyweight tournament champion, the Goliath, Jamal Ben Sadi! It's 1 1. I want to fight Rico again. The boss, right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. What a crowning achievement that was for Jamal Ben Sadiq. And he did it with one arm in the final against Attic Bowie. But the one thing Jamal Ben Sadiq doesn't have that he certainly wants is the World Heavyweight Championship. He can get it with a win on January 30th, but he's got to beat Rico, something no one has been able to do as he's defended his title nine consecutive times. And for Rico, right now, it's all about his legacy. 
for me, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't even a challenge. People saw this fight. How boring was this fight? I almost fell asleep. It was a tw tw 29 actions in a full... <laughs> 20, 29 actions? Fuck him, you know, I beat him once. I beat him once, he's nothing. You couldn't even knock him, get him in the corner. He was in the corner standing all night. So where were you? What were you doing? Were you scared of him? <laughs> oh my God, let's make it happen, man. I'm ready for this guy. I'm ready for any guy. But if he wants it, let's do it. We got this. It was an exciting fight for the people to watch. So for the rest, yeah, he hit me in the first round. I think that's like, yeah, the only serious punch he landed. Then he would, I hear like discussions like, yeah, in the third round Rico got hit. Well, I was making a low kick and he like punched me in the forehead. <laughs> I, I, because I was on one leg, I got out of balance. I turned around, stand up, boom, let's go. So yeah, maybe that was an eight count. Come on guys, got it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the best thing for me is that people are so talking about, ooh, Rico got hit. I put him down twice and they already make it sound like they have the victory because they put me down or they were close to putting me down. And it's just like, for me, it's a very big compliment. If they feel that already as close as a victory just by putting me down, as long as they put me down and I get back up once more than they do, I'm still the winner. In de 24e minuut, de allerlaatste minuut van de vijfde ronde, dan pas ga ik hem nog uitzien. People gotta have a need to watch the fight. I think that's a, that's a very important thing. So, this upcoming fight has a story. Um, yeah, the the fight with Bader has a story. So we 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 got we got some fights that that has story, and there's a, there's enough competition, you know. But it's just like the the biggest difference is they they can't outwork me. I work harder than all these guys. For me, my mindset is every day I'm with my back against the wall. Because I knew hard times as well. I've been, I knew hard times that I had like just a small amount of money to, to buy gas, to buy diapers for my, for my kids and to take care of my family. But in my mind, that was yesterday and I never want to go back to that time. So you can only go one way. And that's straightforward. And even though I'm successful today, in my mind, I wasn't successful yesterday. And that keeps me motivated and driven to go 100% each day. And yeah, just make sure I, I work everybody and be in great shape and keep winning fights. Everybody's very good in the gym, but in the ring, it's like a whole different level because it comes like a lot of more tension and stress and pressure. And if I can be uh, as good as I'm here in the gym, in the ring, well, they're gonna, they're gonna have another problem. <laughs> they're gonna have Rico at a whole different level. Like, I think in the ring, I'm like at 80, 80% of what I'm normally capable of in the, in, the, in the training. Last fight, <laughs> I think I was at 65, <laughs> 65, 70%. Last fight wasn't, uh, wasn't my best. But, like I said, it is what it is. I had a lot going on. I had a lot going on, which distracted me of my main goal. And yeah, that's like, for me, it was a very important lesson to learn that the, the mental part that comes with what we do is so much more important than the physical part. The physical part helped me. Because, because I was physically in such good shape, I was able to resist all the blows I got and the downs and whatever. Because I was physically strong, we could bear. But because I was mentally out of balance, I wasn't like there where I normally am.
at where I fight like mentally. So I think that that was the that's what the big, biggest difference was for me, and that like was the lesson for me. Like mentally, you should be such in in balance, and if you're out of balance, it's is the ring is not a, a nice place to be. There's so much more factors that make you successful because talent you, you you're born with talent and that's just like one thing because uh, when somebody that's talented and just does what he does and whatever he can be pretty good but people that work hard can pass people that are very talented and but when talent starts working hard it like excels goes to another level so and I don't see myself as the most talented out there but I am the hardest worker without a doubt How does the world look like uh, Rico still champion? Um, hopefully another uh, good fight coming up versus whoever. And yeah, like a, I think what I, what I hope most is that this whole sport keeps evolving and keeps uh, going to the next level. Especially now with us being in pay-per-view mode and the world also having the, the need of something like that I think that's like I hope after the 30th of January like people are really like used to it so we got a, an event pay-per-view event coming up another pay-per-view event coming up like we just like get used to this whole situation that we are in right now and hopefully just life turns back to normal as people are saying it but what is normal because now wearing face mask and everything starts to get starts getting normal so staying distance instead of uh giving everybody a hand just <laughs> the elbow the the the, the covid greed so you know what what is normal but you know we i think sometimes we're so strongly holding to the past like oh that was so much better or back then we had this and that that was so much better than what we have right now but we, we, we're not living in the future, we are living today. So just embrace everything you have, embrace um, that you're healthy, embrace the lessons that, that life teaches us and just, just keep moving forward, stay happy. Youngster, I made a mistake, got hit, dropped. The king still reigns supreme. It's 1 1. I want to fight Rico again. The boss, right now, you know, I'm the king, I'm the king of the jungle, and if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath, man. I know I can do this. Well, Joe, you've been in kickboxing all your life. I'm putting this out there. You got to answer me. Is Rico Verhoeven the greatest heavyweight kickboxer that's ever lived?
Well, it, it's – I would have to say if he's not, he's very close to it. We've seen him just so dominant, you know, eight years, ten title defenses, and just barely being hurt um, in that title reign. So it's very close. I think he's only – you know, just cracked 30 years old. I think he's got more to develop, more potential to see. And even if you ask Dennis Crowell, you he will tell you Rico's not even close to his potential. So that says a lot. So if he's not there, he's going to be there very, very soon. But I don't want you to count out Jamal Ben Sadiq yet, man. We've seen that power, 80% finish. Well, we've seen their fights against common opponents. Look back at the classic title fight at Glory 49. We've taken a closer look at both the King and the Goliath. And make no mistake about it. This rivalry is at a fever pitch. Well, he spit me in the face. So I think that's, uh, that's a good way to start. For me, he's such a disrespectful person. He's not like a, like a true sportsman. He's not an athlete. But if you're a true sportsman, you're, you're, you have respect for everybody. I will knock him out in the second round. You gotta take a loss to become a boss. And I'm the boss right now. You know, I'm the king. I'm the king of the jungle. And if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. It's time for a new face. It's time for a new world heavyweight champion. And that will be me. He doesn't have a heart. When things get tough, that show, like, who the real fighter is. I waited two years for this fight. He was very lucky in the tournament, very lucky. I'm a different fighter at the moment. Uh, I think different, I fight different. He thinks he deserves it. I don't need five rounds to win uh, from him. That's one thing for sure, I think he knows that also. And again, I'm gonna teach him again the same lesson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time for talking is almost over. January 30th, live on pay-per-view. Joseph Valtellini, we've got four world title fights on this card. Have you ever seen a card quite like this one? Well, I have never seen a card this stacked. Four world title fights, and each fight has some sort of rivalry or some sort of big stakes on the line, so I can't be more excited. Yeah, let's look at the fight card, ladies and gentlemen. First world title fight right out of the gate. Tiffany Van Seuss returning against Alex Pereira's younger sister, Joe. Yeah, Kenalina Pereira, it's all about can she handle that experience of Tiffany Van Seuss. Tiffany Van Seuss, you know, is that face of North American Muay Thai and kickboxing, and she wants to stay dominant, but Pereira's younger, she's hungry, and she might have two Pereira champions in one household in one night. And then how about this? We have two trilogy fights on the same card. The first, Cedric Dumbe versus Bertel Grunart for the welterweight title. Yeah, that's all about beef, rivalry, tension, and bad blood. So I think right away you're going to expect fireworks, a lot of action, and both guys trying to knock each other out. And Joe, we've been talking about this fight for it feels like 10 years. And finally, it is here. Artem Baita versus Alex Pereira for the light heavyweight championship. Alex Pereira, we've seen the noise he's been making, knocking out all of his opponents, but we haven't seen much of Vahitov. But if you asked me a year ago who Vahitov was, and I would tell you he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world. You ask me now, I'll tell you Alex Pereira. So you put the two together, we got a big mega fight here and the unification. And then of course, for the world heavyweight title, Rico versus Jamal. Hey, you know, we saw Rico go to the campus twice against Badr Hari. That's got to fuel the fire for Jamal Ben Sadiq, thinking he can knock out the king. And that's what makes this fight interesting, seeing Rico vulnerable in those fights with Bader, knowing how much power Jamal Ben Sadiq has, this fight can go any way. And this is why we're all excited and waiting for January 30th. Needless to say, it is must-see TV live exclusively on pay-per-view. Go to glorykickboxing.com. And remember, you're not just supporting this event and entertaining yourself. You're supporting the sport of kickboxing that all of us love so much. So we'd love to have you there. Can't wait to see it. January 30th, live on pay-per-view. For Bazooka Joe, Joseph Baltolini, I'm Todd Grisham. We'll see you at the bikes. Jamal Ben Sadiq. Oh, he knocked it down! Oh, 
youngster, I made a mistake, got hit, dropped. The king still reigns supreme. It's 1-1, one, one. I want to fight Rico again. The boss right now, you know I'm the king, I'm the king of the jungle, and if he wants it, try and come and get it, baby. I'm the Goliath man, I know I can do this.